I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the Sabre sensor from Cognizance. In my last video, um, Guide to DSLR Camera Traps, I talked about this sensor. It was brand new at the time. I hadn't really had a chance to test it. It seemed very exciting and now that I've had a chance to actually use it in the field, I thought I would actually do a review. Among the sensors I've deployed in the field, this is one of the most well-designed and has the most feature-rich options I've ever seen. It uses an invisible laser, LiDAR. It uh, can be quick and easy to set up. It's got an auto range button and can be set up in a matter of seconds. It also has the ability to generate its own Wi-Fi. And if you download a mobile app or use the computer app, you can get into a host of features that will let you really customize how to use this particular sensor. This will not be an in-depth review. If you want to know about all the functions and features, you're not going to learn it in this video. This is really just about my experience using the sensor in the field. Now, when I first was thinking about using the sensor, I was thinking about using it in a, a long-term camera trap. And what I think of long-term is a week or more. And I, for a number of reasons, found that this sensor is not ideal for a long-term deployment. The internal battery just doesn't last as long as I would like, and bringing an auxiliary battery makes the whole system and setup quite a bit bigger and more complex. However, if you want to set it up for just a night or three, this sensor is perfect. You can really fine tune the sensitivity. If you want to photograph something large and slow, you can slow down the laser pulses to be less sensitive. If you want to photograph something super fast and small, you can fine tune it to be really sensitive. One of the features I really like about this sensor is, is it has like a window range setting. So you can have a very specific window in space in which your camera will be triggered. If it's too far away, it won't be triggered. If it's too close, it won't be triggered. But in this direct window, it will be triggered. That's kind of cool and it's one of the only sensors I know that can actually do that. The exterior of the unit is pretty well designed as well. It's weatherproof. It's got uh, a fairly understandable small menu for quick setups and it has a quarter 20 mount on the bottom for quick deployment. Probably my favorite use for the Sabre is photographing something like bats. High speed, small animals. Um, and if you're familiar at all with how high speed, ultra high speed photography works, this unit can actually drive a high speed shutter. If you don't know about how ultra high speed photography works, stay tuned. I'll explain that in a later video. The Sabre does have a few limitations and I'm going to share some of those with you. It generally doesn't work well around water and to be fair it says in the manual if water is downrange of the sensor it's not recommended it won't work well. But I found even when I'm trying to shoot um, a trigger point or a laser above water like say to photograph bats coming down to a pond to drink that it just doesn't work. Um, there's something about that that doesn't work at all. Um, if I move the, uh, the sensor up, it'll start to work, but you know, I want to be able to deploy it fairly close to the surface, maybe two inches above. It doesn't work for that. However, you know, bats leaving a cave or any other situation where I'm not around water, it does a great job. Now, speaking of water, this unit is designed to be weatherproof. Not waterproof, but definitely weatherproof. It's got a protective outside coating. Uh, it's got gaskets, it's got uh, protected connectors. But that brings up a story. Uh, recently, I had an assignment in Borneo, and it was mainly uh, a video assignment, but I was able to fit a small camera trap setup in my bag. And I dragged this setup all the way through Borneo, and when we finally got all the way out to Dano Garang, uh, I set up a, the, the camera trap with the Sabre on a trail that was known to be used by clouded leopards. Now, when I set it up, um, it, I had a great spot. Um, that night, there was a torrential tropical downpour. And if you have been in those, you know what I'm talking about. There's like sheets of water just flowing down from the sky. It's quite remarkable. Uh, and the next morning when I went to go check on the camera system, the Sabre wasn't working at all. The uh, other gear that I had secured in my homemade weatherproof equipment cases were dry as bone, everything was fine. So when I got home, I sent the unit back to Cognizus and Paul, the chief engineer and owner of Cognizus, really stands behind his equipment. He looked at the unit and speculated that because of the travel in luggage, 
that uh, one of the wired ports was torqued a little bit. And because of that stress, it made a little access, a little crack for water to get into. And during the torrential downpour, water got in and killed it. So I lost that setup, oh well. To prevent that from ever happening again, when I use it in the future, I'm going to put a piece of uh, black plastic over it to protect the ports and the front lenses from the elements. You can decide whether that's really necessary. It's just something I'm going to do based on experience. Despite those limitations, it has a lot of great features and it's one of my favorite sensors that I've ever used. I love having it in my camera bag and especially for things like birds and bats and short-term camera trap trails, it really comes into its own. It's a fantastic piece of kit. It's come to my attention that some of the uh, sensors I talked about in my previous video, a guide to DSLR camera traps, are either hard to find or no longer being made. And there's some new equipment that's come out and I'm going to be doing some additional specific equipment reviews in the future. In the meantime, look for my next video where we're going to go to Southern Oregon to photograph, or at least try to photograph, Pacific Fisher. A few unexpected things happened and it was quite an adventure. Hope to see you then.